Today we're going to talk about the Giga castings. So this is much improved from the rear Giga casting that we had in our early 2020 Model Y because it did not include the rear crush cans or that cross car piece right there. Ours was also split down the center and it had a cover. So a huge amount of integration here um, that's improved quite a lot in the past two years. It's also amazing to see how few parts are left in the body structure when you remove the front and rear casting. They were both blown away by how few parts are truly left. In this video, surprise, surprise, they're blown away by Tesla's engineering again. Yep, the crew at Munro and Associates tear down Tesla's latest Model Y Giga casting, showing how much progress Tesla has made in the last two years on their feat of epic engineering, sharing what happens in a collision, discussing repairability, and plenty more. And before we get into it, if you want to instantly unlock over 100 exclusive videos, plus my 10-year Tesla stock price targets and loads of other perks, including optional access to my Tesla valuation model, join our growing community of thousands of supporters on Patreon with the link in the pinned comment. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment-themed merch in the merch store. Now, before we get into the highlights of this teardown, and as always, there is a link in the description to the full teardown video, I just want to set the scene for those who aren't aware. It was around two years ago that Tesla first embarrassed the entire automotive industry with a gigantic, epic gigacasting, deleting literally hundreds of parts and processes with a single big brain innovation, something any company producing vehicles could have done, yet didn't. Just a few years prior to that, everyone was laughing at how badly Tesla was cobbling together vehicles. Oh, they don't even know how to put a vehicle together, f***ing morons. Those comments did not age well. The first question I would like to ask, why do you think it is that other automotive manufacturers didn't do this when they could have? Let's be honest here, it's pretty obvious why they didn't do it. One, insufficient brains. These companies do have the B, C, D, and E players, so there's that. Tesla has all the world's best engineers. In addition, people love the comfort zone. Complacency, oh, keep doing things the way we've always done them. Don't rock the boat. Don't suggest any new ideas. And if you're the kind of person, especially the kind of engineer, working at one of these companies who actually does have some suggestions for how to save a shit ton of money, how to make the company enormously profitable, how to do things different and better, you're likely to be met with comments along the lines of, shut the fuck up, don't rock the boat, just do what you're told. Otherwise, get the fuck out of here. Which is exactly what Sandy Munro did and founded Money on Associates decades ago. But as we know, Tesla does not stand still. They are constantly innovating, constantly improving, constantly learning and growing, doing whatever they can. Everything's fair game, nothing's off limits. Tesla still hasn't completed the full final vision for the gigantic Giga casting in the Model Y, but they're well on the way. So let's look at the latest and see how much progress Tesla has already made on again, something that was already two years ago embarrassing the entire automotive industry and has continued to get better since. This would probably be an awkward time to ask the question, how many automotive manufacturers have already copied Tesla's original gigantic rear casting? The answer, funnily enough, is exactly the same number as the amount of functioning neurons in the brain of a Tesla short seller, zero something to consider. And by the way, guys, I was obviously joking about the Tesla short sellers and the brain. You know, I said that they didn't have any neurons in their brains. Well, the truth is they don't have a brain. So obviously by default, there's no neurons there. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Giga castings. And these castings are beautiful examples of integration. So many pieces and parts are integrated. I know Tesla showed, what was it? 172 parts were eliminated and replaced with just two 1600 spot welds and focus on some of the pieces that are integrated. So this is the mount for the front motors. Now, most of you will know this, but it does bear repeating. The deletion of parts and processes can save a truly colossal amount of money and time and factory footprint capital expenditure. There's so many knock-on effects by deleting parts and processes. This is the ultimate example of that in action. As Elon has said, the best part is no part. The best process is no process. This wasn't hyperbole. This was an instruction to Tesla's engineers, same two of SpaceX. And once again, I want to underscore just five years ago, when Munro and Associates tore down Tesla's original Model 3, it was the cluster f of all cluster fucks. The electronics were stunning, I get all that stuff, but the actual physical hardware, the bits and pieces, the body, the rear, the front, etc., an absolute debacle. But the rate of progress in just the last half decade is truly stunning. And it's worth considering what do the next five years look like? And the next five and the next five. To emphasize this point, let's do some real rough math here. Let's just imagine, hypothetically, the Tesla is able to reduce the cost of producing a vehicle by $1,000, which is a staggering amount. Most automotive manufacturers would be nothing if they can save a cent per vehicle. But just hypothetically speaking, if Tesla can innovate in terms of their cost to produce a vehicle and drive that cost down by $1,000, this year they'll sell about 1.5 million vehicles. That is a cost saving of $1.5 billion. That's billion with a B. 
This means Tesla either has much higher profit margins and or the flexibility to massively reduce the price of their vehicles by a thousand bucks a pop, which really makes a big difference. Remember, I've said this before, an incremental decrease in the price of a vehicle causes an exponential increase in the number of people who can afford it. There is not a linear relationship. It's not just the cost savings. There's a knock-on effect. This is like a domino effect. If you delete parts and processes, you also delete the shit that needs to be in a factory and shit that needs to be moved around a factory. Not only that, you also delete robots that need to be in a factory. What does this mean? Over time, you actually eke out more capacity from the same factory footprint. In other words, a factory that maybe could have produced 500,000 units per year without a gigantic casting, Maybe in the future it's producing six, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand vehicles per year. No expansion in actual size of the factory, just a deletion of parts and processes, less stuff in the factory, less robots in the factory, less movement of parts in the factory, and so on. This is super nerdy engineering stuff, but it really matters. Some pieces they were not able to integrate. I know we covered this in an earlier video with Carl and I, and there is some spot welds here. So I know we couldn't see it in our other video, but you can see one, two, three, four, five uh, spot welds but also the purple structural adhesive as well as behind that. So a lot of people really wanna know what does it weigh? So as you see this thing sitting on the floor right here, 187.4 pounds. Just to contextualize this, I know many people watching have a girlfriend that weighs more than this. I'm just kidding, I know you don't have a girlfriend. But in all seriousness though, for something this size, adding this much structure, this much of the vehicle, to be so light, most people watching could deadlift this as a warm up. really speaks volumes. Over time, I suspect that the mass will actually reduce even further. Tesla will figure out ways to take out some little parts here and there and actually reduce the mass even further. But this is nuts. And remember, over time, as Tesla continues to remove mass, this means more range out of the same size battery pack. The less mass the vehicle needs to move, the more bang for your buck, so to speak. Not sure if GM's new Hummer EV got the memo. That does have some small brackets and pieces connected, particularly the, the crush can, and which is bolted on and this uh, fender support which is bolted on there are a few pieces which are welded on and then there's another piece there's a steel reinforcement that's secured onto the underside the old model 3 and model y did have an aluminum bracket that bolted up to the shock tower that is gone now because i'm looking at the this is the front right here correct and so they're just using these three points here. That big aluminum bracket is gone, but that interfaces with that, that steel doubler and the portion of the shock tower. Correct. In the, in the cast aluminum portion, uh, what was unique about it in the, the previous iterations is it allowed the upper control arm to be part of this assembly before it came to the vehicle because then everything could be fastened vertically as uh, the whole assembly came in. And now the upper control arm is secured uh, through these fasteners right here. Correct. Now let's move on to the rear, Jordan. So this is much improved from the rear giga casting that we had in our early 2020 Model Y because it did not include the rear crush cans or that cross car piece right there. Once again, words matter. Much improved from the original rear casting. They've integrated much more. This is incredible, to be expected. It really does show that Tesla won't stand still. They continue to innovate I can't wait to see what things look like in another two years. Ours was also split down the center and it had a cover. So a huge amount of integration here um, that's improved quite a lot in the past two years. I mean, his words, not mine. A huge amount of integration, epic improvements over the last couple of years. Again, I just have to mention, five years ago, Tesla laughing stock of the automotive industry in terms of how they cobbled together the parts on the actual vehicle body. A few years later, embarrassing the entire automotive industry and they're still not done. Now, one of the biggest questions we get on Monroe Live is how can you service these or you'll never be able to service them. So in the rear, if you take a large impact in the rear. <laughs> um, geez, I'm really resisting the urge. <laughs> in the rear, if you take a large impact in the rear and you're smashing far up into the. I just can't. <laughs> the left rear or right rear corner, the vehicle is most likely going to be totaled front. Uh, you can take a little bit more of an impact and there's crush cans and sacrificial pieces to repair. And if you look at a traditional stamp steel body, if you're getting in a bad enough accident where you're messing up the rear shock tower or you have cross car geometry issues or your front shock tower or you've torqued the, the engine bay if you have an engine, the car is going to be totaled. So repairability for the rear, like if, if someone were to say, oh, I got to replace the whole casting, 
I don't think it's going to happen. Absolutely not. Definitely Even not. We got it out, but at the detriment of destroying the body. So we'll go check out some of the, the damage we did to the steel. Our team pried pretty heavily. We also plasma blasted the holes out. There is a method of using a drill, but it's very time consuming. You, you burn through a lot of bits and it's just easier if you just use the plasma cutter. And at certain points, we actually heated it up to melt some of the structural adhesive. And I think it worked pretty well. Here's the location of that last bolt. It's right here, Jordan. There was one here. Correct. And yeah, I think it was here. No. It was up higher. It was, yep, there. When Corey was talking about torching it. We had this thing fully tensioned out with the hydraulic press. So there was a tube going from the inside of the sill to the other inside of the sill. So we had hydraulic press, uh, press fully tensioned out here. And then not until concurrently when we hit it with the torch did the thing pop. So we had a, as much pressure as the hydraulic press could put out on these sills. It didn't budge. Only when we hit this whole area with a, a hot torch did it denature the adhesive enough to the point where it physically popped away from the side of the sill. So just to translate for those who are getting a little bit lost in the jargon there, this is one rigid motherfucker. This is what you want in a vehicle. Whether you're taking an impact in the rear or the front or both at the same time or not, when it comes to vehicles, rigid equals better. The fact that they had a hydraulic press trying to pop this thing apart and still had to blowtorch it just to separate things, is it any surprise Tesla continues to produce the safest vehicles ever tested and uh, not in my opinion, in the safety agency's opinion. And just regarding the whole car being written off if you take a pretty heavy impact, front, rear, whatever, for some strange reason, don't know why, people seem to think this is a problem. I'm not sure they're aware most vehicles in a reasonable size accident, the same is true. You got a write off. Insurance companies don't want to be liable. If they repair a vehicle and there's any structural imperfections, there's another crash and people end up dead as a result. On the list of priorities in terms of manufacturing a vehicle, repairability in the event of a collision should be dead fucking last. This is not something you're going to be repairing in the event of a collision. It's also amazing to see how few parts are left in the body structure when you remove the front rear casting. Once again, words matter. Engineering expert just says, it's amazing to see how few parts are left. Engineering expert, amazed by Tesla's engineering. Again, what a surprise. You see the body side outer, the body side inner are two major components. These have now become larger parts. Our initial Model 3 was much smaller. You can see they're still utilizing Taylor welded blanks right here. So they'll typically vary either the thickness of the steel or the quality of the steel. So they go from ultra high strength steel to very high strength steel, boron steels, hot stamp steels. Um, and this is the separating line before the part is ever formed. Um, the blank has, has different uh, thicknesses, just like we saw on the cover of the pack for the battery. I think we had four, three or four different thicknesses. The leading edge of the cover of the pack for the 4680 was thicker. There was a thin section. It was thick over the seats and it was thin for the rear. Um, so an interesting use of, of materials here on the body, but so few parts. I mean, imagine working in this body shop, Jordan. I know we have three or four people at Monroe. We have Scott Hildreth, who's worked at, in body shops for years. And we have Paul Lester, who'd worked in body shops for years. They were both blown away by how few parts are truly left. Again, I know it's getting repetitive, but blown away by how few parts were left. People with experience actually on body shops, putting together vehicles, blown away by how few parts are left after Tesla's incredible big brain engineering feat, the gigantic casting. And the thing to me, uh, in addition to just the part reduction, is the way, the way that they accommodate net build versus slip. So what I'm talking about there is, so as all these panels come together, there's only a certain tolerance that you can hold key dimensional uh, artifacts on the body in place with, you know, vehicle after vehicle after vehicle. So on the new Model Y, they actually lock in the width of the vehicle via the casting. So when the casting drops in, there is no cross car adjustability. It is a net lock in here. And then what they do on the, the greenhouse or this front, this front header, the, the greenhouse is what we refer to the upper body structure as, you see this stamping like goes inside, right? There's like a channel for it, goes inside this intermediate bracket. And what that allows them to do is actually vary the position of it ever so slightly 
cross car or in the Y axis for those of you who are running CAD. So they still have some cross car adjustability at the top, right, for the tumble home and making sure that all of these features are aligned, but the bottom is locked in by the castings. There is no adjustability down there. So again, to translate, no adjustability means no variation, means less slash no manufacturing defects, more consistent products, less complexity, less variation, win, win, win. I'll never tire of watching these experts tear down Tesla vehicles and share their thoughts and impressions. I mean, how many times do you hear words like blown away, amazed, surprised, incredible, and so on? Words really do matter. I can't for the life of me grasp how people today still say such idiotic things as the competition is coming, referring to legacy automotive manufacturers and new EV startups, implying that manufacturing vehicles, electric vehicles, doing so at high volume and doing so profitably without going bankrupt trying to get there is simple, easy, anyone can do it. We've seen an example of Tesla going from the worst in the industry in terms of putting vehicles together to five years later, running circles around the entire industry. And it's not just manufacturing the actual vehicle that matters. The software is a huge component. The battery is a huge component. Thermally managing the battery is a huge component. I could go on and on and on and on. Don't get me started on full self-driving. Even on the thing that Tesla should be the worst at, being a Silicon Valley startup after all, actually physically assembling vehicles. They're embarrassing the whole industry. This should really give people pause. And one final but extremely important point, and please don't tell the dolts at Moody's, is the economics of the Giga Casting itself. For those who don't know, these gigantic IDRA presses to actually make the Giga Casting are extremely fucking expensive. Below a certain volume of vehicles produced, it's actually not economic to use this, even though it will save parts and processes. There's a huge capital investment. This only really makes economic sense for high volume vehicles. I don't know the exact numbers. My best guess is probably somewhere on the order, let's call it a few hundred thousand vehicles per year, maybe getting closer to half a million. This is another reason why Tesla's strategy of having one category killer per category is so brilliant. This is also why you will never see a gigantic casting for Model S or X unless there's major innovations I can't even envision because it just doesn't make sense. So when you hear about Government Motors plans to release 420 different models of electric vehicle by yesterday, how they're going to catch Tesla, please keep this in mind. Even though Tesla now has a model others can copy. Invent your own alloy. I mean, just do a bit of cutting edge material science. No problems, right? <laughs> Wrong. But besides that, yeah, just invent your own alloy buy some casting machines from IDRA, we'll get some other company to make them, and copy. But the problem is, if you don't have sufficient volume on each vehicle model to actually get a return on these, it's not viable in the first place. In other words, if companies aren't producing vehicles, of which a single model, they're making many hundreds of thousands of units per year, even if they wanted to, they can't copy Tesla because it's financial suicide. I think what I'm trying to say is, legacy automotive manufacturers and EV startups are completely and utterly fucked. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget, full teardown linked in the description. And lastly, don't forget you can support the channel and unlock over 100 exclusive videos, instant up-to-date access to my Tesla stock price targets, and loads of other content and perk by joining Patreon with the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment. I'll see you over there. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel and instantly unlock over 100 exclusive videos, plus my 10-year Tesla stock price targets and loads of other perks, including optional access to my Tesla valuation model, join our growing community of thousands of supporters on Patreon with the link in the pinned comment. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment-themed merch in the merch store. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. Please let me know your thoughts on today's video in the comments below, and click the card on screen now to watch the next video.